So the U.S. Surgeon General is saying that loneliness can be hazardous to your health. And he says that it costs the health industry billions of dollars a year. Dr. Vivek Murthy equates the health risks of loneliness to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. His 81-page report estimates that half of U.S. adults have experienced loneliness. And it says that loneliness has hit the 15 to 24 age group especially hard. He suggests people join community groups and put down their phones when they're with their friends. Lee Richardson joins us now to go more in-depth on the findings of this report. She's a licensed professional counsel and founder of the Brain Performance Center. Lee, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So, Lee, in this report, the Surgeon General has said that he spoke with many Americans who describe feeling isolated, invisible, insignificant. Sometimes they wouldn't even use the word lonely. Um, what does that mean exactly? What are the biggest telltale signs when someone is feeling lonely? Well, that's what makes it more complicated because people react differently. Some people, when they're, they're lonely, they get angry, they get irritable. Other people may shut down and socially isolate. So it's really, you can't just walk in the room and look around and say, oh, I can pick out the lonely person. And it's important to note that being alone doesn't mean loneliness. You know, the Surgeon General has said that he never viewed this loneliness as a public health concern until now. How significant do you think this crisis is? I mean, should more Americans view this as a serious problem in this country, especially as technology becomes more and more advanced? Well, it's a huge problem, and it's impacting our brain health, and it's also impacting our physical health. People that are lonely are more prone to have heart attacks and, stri and strokes, and people that are disabled, people that are in minority groups are more apt to be lonely. And we're finally realizing that the future consequences, they have found that people that are lonely are more likely to have dementia. It's, it's a very serious issue. Yeah, he had said in his report that he believes the healthcare industry suffers billions of dollars a year because of this. And he also says that it's just as bad as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Do you agree with that statement? I absolutely do, because loneliness affects your mental health. Mental health is brain health, and the brain is an organ just like the heart or the lungs. And that brain, when that brain shuts down, it's very similar to when the heart or the lungs shut down. And, you know, during the pandemic, many of us moved to remote work as the norm. And now there are many Americans who prefer it, and they don't want to go back to the office. What kind of an impact do you think this is going to have on society as a whole? Well, I think it is a society issue. It's not just a, a personal issue. And I know that people before the pandemic, 25% of Americans were suffering from a mental health issue. So if you started off with anxiety, and then a lot of people that had anxiety got a lot more comfortable working from home. They were more in their zone, and now they don't want to give it up. But their ability to go back to work or to go back to their community and connect is disappearing. And it's that social connected, being socially connected is what we really need to focus on. I want to talk about social connection for a second because Murthy spoke on how technology has this negative impact, um, citing people who spent two hours or more day on social media, saying that they were likely to feel more isolated isolated than those who only spent about 30 minutes a day on social media, but the word social <laughs> is, is in the term. So this was supposed to be a way for people to connect, right? More people connecting online. It's called social media. Can any of this help with the loneliness, even if people aren't sitting right next to each other? Because you did say earlier on that people can still feel lonely, even if there are other people in the room. Absolutely they can and there's nothing that there's nothing like looking somebody in the eye and shaking a hand to somebody that gives you a feeling of being connected. And I know we've said that oh, we can all connect now, but what we're doing is we're getting we're disassociating more. We can sit there and we can play games in a group, but we never see anybody. We can be on Zoom meetings 
And so many people now will turn their picture off on a Zoom meeting. So there, we're not really connecting the way that, that we could through technology, it, but it's hard to because it, it, technology is cold. And it's it, for some people, it's their safe zone. I feel so comfortable right here in my room using a Zoom meeting to communicate, but it's not the same level of interaction, that personal touch, that looking, reading somebody's body language. I can learn more reading somebody's body language than I can from listening to what they say. And you keep using the word connecting. Is that the solution in all of this? How do we get people to continue to connect? What role do you think the government, your workplace, a person's school might play in this issue? I think they all play a role because what it is, is to feel connected, you have to be part of a community. And whether it's your work community or your school community or your religious community, that sense of community is what gives you the glue that forms that connection. So how can people, people who might be completely isolated, how can they, how can they find their community. People use the word tribe sometimes and they say, you know, they never feel happy until they find their tribe. And sometimes that takes a lifetime. So what kind of advice do you have to someone who is facing loneliness, who wants to connect socially, who wants to find their community? You know, and I give this advice a lot and it's be open to receive because there's pos positive energy out there, but you have to be open to receive it. You can go to the grocery store and when the person checking you out greets you kindly and tries to interact with you, be open to that. And a lot of people aren't. So it, it's, we got to get out of our head. We are so stuck in our head that, that that's creating a huge barrier. I, I agree with you. I agree with you tenfold. Uh, you know, I once moved overseas, didn't know a single person, but I was so open to meeting people um, because I felt like I was in a new environment and I wasn't scared. Here, I am always up against the clock. I never have the time. I may not take the time for the pleasantries to say, hello, how are you? How's your day going? But you know what? My life was so much better when I took the time <laughs> to do those things. So. It it really is connection at the end of the day. Uh, Lee Richardson from the Brain Performance Center, thank you so much for all of this. Um, we do appreciate your time today.